In this video, I will be teaching you three things that you need to know in order to stop romanticizing potential partners and romanticizing karmics. Hello, Crystal Babies and Gems. Thank you so much for joining me. I am the Crystal Babe, owner of Sacred Eclectics and founder of the Sister Tribe of Pinellas. Now we know that we attract karmics based on our level of evolution and conscious evolution, where we are in our learning journey, because that's what we're here to do on Earth School is to learn. And the best way for us to learn is through our relationships. And so sometimes we will still attract karmics, but understand that it is because of this evolutionary learning process that we're here to do. However, there are things that we can do to help better prepare ourselves for these relationships and to get the benefit of these relationships without feeling completely broken. Oftentimes people aren't actually falling in love with said person, they're actually falling in love with the idea of this person, the potential of this person. When we get into manifesting and things like that, it's very common for people to start romanticizing potential partners that aren't really who they are to the core. So one of the first things that we need to do in order to stop romanticizing partners is to stop watching love readings. <laughs> I know this is so difficult because they are fun and exciting and entertaining, right? But it's more beneficial for you to get a one-on-one -on -one reading with a psychic or a reader that can really tell you who you're meant to be with and help you to move through these karmic cycles to get the lessons and to move forward so that we can eventually attain our holy grail union. This is not to say that all readings are bad. If you watch YouTube readings, then you can still do that, but don't do it with love in mind. Watch ones that are gonna help you heal and progress along your journey so that you can attract the right partner to you. The reason for this is because when you're watching a love reading, they're reading the energy in your field. And not everybody that comes forward is going to be a good partner for you. We have many soulmates in this lifetime, and a lot of them we feel strong ties to because they are a past life partner. They're somebody that we've known before, and therefore the tie and the bond is very strong. So understand that we have a lot of karmic soulmates that come into this life to help us to learn about ourselves and to evolve. But that does not mean that every soulmate is your holy grail counterpart. And oftentimes in these readings, the readers are picking up on energy. That means that they could be reading three different people that are in your current energy. And that can be very confusing. And so you could find it very difficult to separate the karmic from divine counterpart. Oftentimes when we listen to these readings, we start to romanticize these potential partners by overthinking and trying to manifest them. So it is one thing to call in your soulmate. It is another to picture that exact person being the right person for you. When the truth is, you don't know them at their core. You don't know what it would be like to even be with them. So it's very important to scale that back and start manifesting the type of person that you really want in your life that would be a good match for you without a face. Don't become too connected or too invested in someone that you haven't even gotten to know yet. And when it comes to manifesting the partner that you want to attract, pay attention to how you want them to make you feel. Do you want them to make you feel valued and loved and cherished for who you truly are? Of course, those are the things that you should be focusing on. And so picture someone, the exact person that you would like with no one in mind. Don't picture, you know, John or Ethan or whatever. It is all too easy to be emotionally invested in somebody from these readings that you really don't even know yet. So realize that what hasn't happened yet is not real. Point number two of how to stop romanticizing partners, recognize red flags. If somebody is doing certain things, posting certain things, and it doesn't resonate with you, and you don't really like those types of things, they're not your person. The person that you uh, want to attract is the person that you'll actually like. And that's the trap of romanticizing people. 
is that we become emotionally invested in something that they are not. So we need to start recognizing people for who they actually are because people will show up exactly who they are because nine times out of 10, if they're already triggering you and you're not even in a committed relationship with them, then they're probably a karmic and they're not in alignment with you and what your true values and what you desire in a person really is. So remember to listen to your emotions and how that person is making you feel about yourself. Another red flag is the runner chaser dynamic. If you find yourself chasing after people, chasing after the idea of a future with them that doesn't exist, then that's usually a sign. Recognizing red flags are so important because recognizing red flags puts you in a place where you can become in alignment with that which you're trying to attract because it lets you know what you don't like. And so I cannot stress it enough, pay attention to your emotions and how they're making you feel. Because if somebody doesn't make you feel good about yourself or wanted and you're constantly trying to chase after them or get their attention, they're not in alignment with you. And if they're not showing up for you now, how could you expect them to show up for you in the future? And for my third point on how to stop romanticizing people is to stop putting them on a pedestal. Oftentimes, before we get to know someone, it is easy to make excuses for them because typically we're empathic people, right? We care for people and we wanna see the best in everyone, but that can become very dangerous to our own well-being because we're not seeing people for who they truly are and we're romanticizing this idea of what it would be to, like to be with them at their best self, right? But you can't fall in love with that. That's falling in love with potential. That's investing in something that isn't real. And so it's important to not make excuses for people's actions and to accept them for who they're showing themselves to be. And by all means, do not fall in love with your idea of what a future would be like with them. Because loving somebody for their potential will never work. Trust me, I did it for 12 years. I was with my karmic soulmate for 12 years because I had this hope of a better future. And then I ended up heartbroken and single. <laughs> and so there you have it. Those are my three major tips on how to stop romanticizing people. Stop watching love readings, recognize red flags, and don't put people on a pedestal. All right, everyone, I am the Crystal Babe, and thank you so much for joining me. If this video resonated with you, then go ahead and give it a like, subscribe, share, comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Namaste.